Okay, so I'm going to show you um, a tutorial, start to finish tutorial on how to put video data into Logger Pro. All right, so the video I want to play into Logger Pro, the video I want to record is this little guy here. I want to measure the speed of this car. Okay, so that's what the video looks like. I'm going to close that video and I've got it stored here in my physics folder. So I'm going to insert uh, on a PC, it's there. On a Mac, you have to go to the very top, hover, and the insert menu will pop down. So go to insert, movie, and then go find your movie. Okay, so I'm going to use the short version of this. All right, it's going to take a second for that movie to load. The movie should be stored again on your hard drive. All right. I want to make this video as big as possible because I'm going to be clicking on this to collect data. Okay, so you don't want a small video there because you're going to, your uncertainty is going to be big. You want to stretch it out as big as possible. Okay, um, a few things uh, you need to know about video collection and data video analysis is the camera needs to be very still for obvious reasons. Um, you don't want the camera to move. Number two is you want some kind of reference distance in the frame. We usually put a meter stick here, something that we ex know the exact dis uh, you know, length of, the exact dimension. Uh, if you don't have that, maybe you go outside and you, you want to watch somebody play soccer, you know how tall the soccer goals are, so you can use the height of the soccer goal to be your reference point. But you need to have some point of reference um, in your video that you know that you know the length of, and it needs to be pretty close to the to the to the object that you're measuring. So if the object, if the if the car was way here in the foreground and the meter stick was way back there in the background, that's that would be out of scale and it wouldn't be the correct the correct value. But here, if we if we I'm going to play the video, you can see that the car is really close to that meter stick in the back there. Okay, there. Unfortunately, to, to play the video again, you have to rewind the video. So you, you press this button here to rewind it. Okay. Um, maybe I'll make it a little bit smaller so you can see the, see the words. There's the rewind button there. Okay. Um, and so I can do that, or I can simply grab this guy here and drag it around to move, move the video forward. All right. Um, the other thing that you need to know about the video is that the motion of the object needs to be either left and right or up and down. It needs to be parallel to the film plane of your camera, right? So if the buggy were coming towards us, getting bigger and bigger and bigger coming towards the camera, we wouldn't really be able to use Logger Pro very well uh, to, it's possible, but it's not easy to use Logger Pro in that way. So you want the you want the, the camera to catch an object going left or right or up or down or something like that. Okay. All right. So I'm going to just pull it back a little bit. And then I want to decide on, you know, I want to think about what, what part of the car am I going to click on? I'm, I want to click this. I'm going to click on one piece of the car and watch how that piece moves over time. Okay. So here, I might want to choose the, that little antenna off the windshield or maybe this little LED light in the back or maybe, you know, the center of one of the wheels or something like that. I probably don't want to use one of these headlights because you can see that as the car goes forward, you lose the headlights there. Okay, so maybe I'm just going to choose this little guy there. Okay, so I'm going to pull it back until it's just on the screen and then I, if I want to, I can choose this guy the previous frame button and go back frame by frame. Okay, I think I'll stop there. Yeah, 16 is off the frame, 17 is on. So this is frame number 17. Okay, and this is the time 0 0.567 seconds after the start of the video. Okay, so that, that might give you some frame of reference there. All right, so now we're ready to start collecting. And the first thing I'm going to do is click on the en Enable Disable Video Analysis. So I want to enable it. Okay. And then what I want to do, the first thing probably I want to do is I want to use this fourth button here, the Set Scale button. This is the yellow ruler that's horizontal. Notice it's the fourth button, not the fifth button. That's the photo distance, which I'll show you in a bit. The fourth button is the Set Scale button. 
And so I want to go click on the object that I know the length of. Okay, so here it is. You can see my, my green line. So I click and, and drag and let it go right there at the very end. And then I tell it how big is that object. And again, this is a meter stick, so it's one meter. Okay, if I want to get rid of that line, if that green line is bothering me, I can simply toggle it off. I can hide it. Okay, by clicking this guy there. All right. So now we are ready to collect data, and we're going to press the red button, which is the add point button. Be careful with this guy. If you collect data, if you start clicking around on the screen accidentally, you're going to start collecting data points that you don't want, and it can be difficult, it can be troublesome to get rid of those data points. So just be careful. When you are ready to go, press the red button, uh, the little add point button, and then you want to click on your object, okay? So that my little object is that little guy there. And you can see that I'm just adding data points one at a time. And as I click, the frame advances. So I started at frame 17, and now I'm up to frame 21, and the time also advances, all right? Um, these data points are a little close together, and I can only imagine how many data points I'm going to have. More data points is, is better. But I don't know if I have the time or if I have the dexterity and I hurt my hand to click that many times. So I'm going to click on the white arrow because I don't want to accidentally start adding data points. I'm going to right click on my video. Okay. I'm going to go to movie options. And then there's there are a couple of things you probably want to click on, or maybe one thing you definitely want to click on almost always is the first VA point, the first video analysis point, defines movie time zero. So I would always choose that, or almost always, probably always choose this, okay? And this tells us that when you start to collect data, that first data point that we collected is gonna be at time zero and not at time 0.567 like, like, we, like we saw earlier, okay? So that's something you probably wanna do. The next thing you want to do is, is if you have a camera that has a weird, um, you know, frame rate, maybe it's a high speed camera, okay, and you might want to override that frame rate. But here it knows what my frame rate of my camera is, and so it, it sets it to that. So you probably don't need to do this if you're using your phone, for example. The, the last thing is, I don't necessarily want it to move, to, I don't want the, the movie to advance one frame at a time. Let's, let's try five frames at a time. So that way, the car will jump five frames and I won't have to collect so much data. Okay, I'm still going to collect a lot of data, but, but five frames seems probably an okay thing to do. So I'm going to press okay there. Now you can see, if I press the red button again, I can start collecting more data. Now you're going to see there's a much bigger jump. Okay, and this is just going to advance the frame by, by more, um, you know, by more uh, frames or advance the movie by more frames. Okay, so here we go. So you want to be real careful. I'm going to go a little fast because this is a tutorial and not so much a, an experiment. Okay, but you want to, again, if you have a mouse or a trackpad, if you have video game skills, right, you want to do this. So I'm going to continue to click, 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 click all the way across. I'm going to pause the video and continue to do so. When I get to the end, I'll unpause it and show you what to do then. Okay, so I'll collect a bunch, and here we are close to the end. I'm going to click here, and now my next frame, or my next uh, data point comes off the screen, so I'm done. At this point, I definitely want to click off of the red dot and click on the, on the white arrow. If I don't, look what happens. I can, I can click on, you know, I can start collecting these data points way over here that are, that are meaningless, okay? So one thing you can do there is you can just do Command Z or Control Z and that will undo the data points. Although it looks like it's taking its time. Okay, so that undid the data point. Let's see if we can do one more with Command Z. So that's taking a bit of time to undo. So we may not want to do that. The other thing you can do if you accidentally add data points that you shouldn't is click the white arrow. Then if you click on the data point that you don't like, then press the Delete key or the Backspace key on the Mac, Okay, delete key. And the other, the other thing is once you click on that, you see a little blue circle around there, you can actually move that data point around. So if that data point is, um, is not where you want it, you can move it around. And as the data point moves, behind the video, there's a graph. Can you see these points over here? So as I move this around, you can see that the data points 
are, are moving as I move the data point around. Okay, so I'm going to click delete there because I don't want it gone. All right, um, I can toggle these points on and off if I don't want them, but there they are. And notice that the points are about equally spaced. And I think that probably tells us something special about this motion that maybe the cart is moving with constant speed because the time between each data point is, is it should be pretty constant. Okay. And the distance looks like it's also pretty constant, but we won't know that until we graph it. Now the graph is here. So look what happens if I, if, oh, oh let, let me show you one thing before we, before I show you the graph. If we rewind the video to put the car here, Notice that as I, as I play the movie backwards, the dots appear and disappear. Okay, so that's kind of cool. Maybe I want to know how, how long that cart is. You know, what is the size of that cart? Is it 20 centimeters? Is it 15 centimeters? How big is that cart? If you want to do that, you can use the, the fifth button down, which is the photo distance button. So if I click on the very front of the car and again hold my mouse down and drag it down to the very back of the car, it tells me that, oh, that was about almost 19 centimeters across, 18.88 centimeters, right? And that tells me in that film plane how big that line is. And so in that way, we can figure out, say, the diameter of the tires if we wanted to do that as well. So I can click there. Maybe we want to know how big that tire is. Boom. And the tire has a diameter of about point uh, 6.7 centimeters okay we can we don't really want that for this lab so there it is all right so let's go back to the graph I was just about to point out what happens with the graph so if you if you click on the graph okay and sometimes your video can get kind of small like this maybe this is how you have it if you click on the graph a lot of students think oh no my video has gone but really your video is just kind of hiding out here behind the graph okay so one thing I might want to do is I might want to make the video kind of small. So I'm because I'm done with it now, but maybe I want to keep it. Okay, and here's here's my graph, and here's my data points. Notice this is time, and this is the x position. X is this guy here. Okay, um, we can stretch the data, and we have the y position. The y is the up and down pos you know position of our data point. And we have the X velocity, the horizontal velocity, and we have the vertical velocity. And the car didn't move vertically, and you, that's why these velocities are very close to zero. And here, the X velocity is around 0.4 or so meters per second, but it's not exactly the same um, all the time. Okay, um, This is our X position and our Y position. So all of this data is represented here on the graph. Okay. Um, one thing we might want to do before we actually look at the graph is to fit the, uh, is to put the axis on there. So the axis. So if I go forward, okay, we can either put the axis over here and have it run this way, or we can put the axis over here. It doesn't really matter. Let's see. Um, let's, let's put the axis over here on the far right hand side. So to do that, we're going to set the origin. Okay. So if we click on, well, let me put it over here just because it's, I know what's going to happen. So the video camera might not have been uh, perfectly level. So I can click this little yellow dot and I can move the axis up until it lines up perfectly with my blue dots there. And so now my axis along the X axis is directly along my data points there, right? And now that will that will change my data table over here. All of this is dynamic. Okay. All right. So if we wanted to move the at the origin back over here, all we have to do is make sure we click on that third button, the set origin button, and you just click on that data point, boop, and now it has moved it over to the far left. Notice that that makes my x values negative, if because this is the negative x direction, and if I click over here then boop, it makes all my x values positive. So maybe I'll leave it here and continue from that point. So now all your data points have been collected. You've set the uh, scale, shown here with a green bar. You've set the origin. You've 
rotating the axes slightly so that all the data points are along the x-axis, right? And now we are ready to look at the graph, okay? So we can make the graph small, or make the movie small again. Make sure that the red dot is not connect, is not, not clicked on, alrighty? And by the way, if you ever wanted to graph this data yourself on Excel, maybe, you can come over here and you can highlight this data, copy it, and paste it. Okay, so let's take a look at the graph. Um, me out of the way there. So this, this is a graph of both position in the X and position in the Y as a function of time. Okay, and um, this is, uh, well, this will tell you lots of stuff about the motion of the car, and I think hopefully you guys know a little bit uh, by now about what this tells you. Okay, so what I want to show you is just how Logger Pro works. So the Y values here, the Y data, this is the how much did the car rise and fall, you know, as it moved left to right, how much did it go up and how much did it go down. And of course it shouldn't go at all up and down and lo and behold, look at our data, it doesn't move in the Y. So the Y data is not really helpful here. So let's just plot the X data. So I can do that by clicking here on the, the axis title and choosing just the X. Okay. I just want position in the X direction versus time. And there it is. Some tools up here are going to help you. Um, let's just run through them. The examine button is kind of useful. All right. And then what I can do is I can hover over a data point and I can see where that position is um, and what time that data point happened up here in this, in this little box here. So you can see as I move around, it shows me the different positions and the different times. I could also move around clicking the arrow key on my keyboard left and right. Notice down here the video plays as I move my, as I move my mouse up and down along my, my graph. All right. So over here, you can see it's the far left where it begins. And then over here, it's the far right. Now here, my slope is a negative slope, right? And what does that tell us? Uh, it looks like it's a constant slope. What does that tell us? So to figure out what the slope is, okay, you can click on the tangent line here. And the tangent line is the slope the instantaneous slope at those different points. And you can see here that tangent line is pretty much straight all the way up. Look at the value of the slope here as I move it back and forth. It's not like negative 0 0.43, 0 0.44, 0 0.43, 0 0.44. So that seems pretty constant. And look at the units of the slope. So what do you think the tangent tells us? Again, this is the instantaneous um, tangent line there. Uh, instantaneous, in this case, velocity. Um, we don't worry about statistics, although you can. The area under the curve, the integral, we won't worry about on this graph. Um, this linear fit here, if we click on the linear fit, oh, and by the way, you can click this little guy to stop the tangent from happening. If you click this button here, it will fit a linear fit for you automatically, and look at that. That's pretty good. Now, right now, all of this data is, goes into calculating what the slope and the y-intercept are. But if I only wanted to say, for example, these data points here in the middle, that's easy to do. I just grab, come over here, you see more of my arrows, a little cross there. And if I put it right there next to that brace, I can click on that and drag it. Okay. And I could do the same down here. It goes from a cross to the little brace and I can click on that. And notice that the data that's highlighted here is also highlighted here on the, on the table. But of course I won't all my data because it all looks pretty good. I like it all, so let's use it all. Okay. This is the correlation that you're looking for. This is R. This correlation is called R. So an R value of one is a highly correlated, it's the data is highly correlated to our to our fit, in this case linear fit. Okay? Now if you did not have a linear fit, but rather maybe a quadratic or some kind of polynomial you know, flowing along here, then you would, you could highlight your data or you can just click on the data table one time and then choose curve fit. Okay. Move myself again. 
So if you do a curve fit, you can choose proportional or linear or quadratic or cubic. And if you scroll down here, you can choose inverse and power and all kinds of stuff. Okay. But if we think it's going to be a linear fit, like this is here, okay, then we have to click that little guy, press the try fit button. It kind of gives us a, a quick little view of that. And then you can say, okay. Alrighty. And now we can uh, we can play around with the slope and the y-intercept, right? Um, oh, this this actually is 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 useful here. This is the slope, and this is the uncertainty of the slope. You can see that our slope is pretty has a very small uncertainty. So this is this is pretty precise data, but sometimes we hide that uncertainty because it just kind of obfuscates what's the what the physics is. So if you right click on this, go to linear fit options. Here you can change how many sig figs you want displayed, the decimal precision. So you say so you only get it to, you know, three, three sig figs, three decimals rather. Okay. Instead of four. And then if you uncheck show uncertainty, okay. And then click, okay. The uncertainty, the plus or minus disappears. And so this is a way that you can display the, the value with or without uncertainty. In this class, it's fine not to do it with the uncertainty. But again, if you wanted to put it in there, you can see that that uncertainty, we are pretty certain that our value, that our values are, are, are precise and, and on that line. So we feel pretty good about our data collection. All right, so that's it. I know that's a little bit longer than I wanted to talk, but that is it in a nutshell. And this is the, the tutorial on how to collect any kind of data, uh, put any kind of video data into Logger Pro. Um, if we ever do colliding objects like this, where you have to watch two objects collide, that will be, I'll show you how to do that. That will be a little tweak. But other than that, this is how you'll do um, all of your data collection in the classroom. Okay. Hope that was helpful. Um, let me know if something was unclear, and I will see you guys soon.